Hello everyone. This is my presentation for my subpopulation of students, which was first generation students. The modern economic climate has resulted in larger numbers of people enrolling in college in recent years. Among these are larger numbers of students who hail from families without college experience, or what we would call first generation students. It is imperative that student affairs and academic affairs professionals, as well as high level leaders in institutions of higher education understand and respond effectively to first generation students. But who are first generation college students? And how do we define them? Defining uh, students, first generation students, and recognizing them is one of the issues. Can you tell which student in this picture is a first generation student? Certainly not. Because first generation students have cross cutting memberships with many other different subpopulations. And unlike someone who is in a subpopulation that has a racial designation or a handicap designation, you, you, you can't recognize a first generation student just by looking at them right away. So one of the problems is defining. And it's a problem because in the different literature, different researchers have defined first generation in different ways. Perhaps the first step in examining first generation college students as a subcategory would be to define what constitutes first generation. This is somehow problematic since different definitions have been offered in the research literature and, and in intervention programs aimed at supporting these students. According to Davis, the higher education community does not have a universal definition for the term first generation college student, and it needs one. Some researchers have defined first generation college students as those for whom neither parent has earned a baccalaureate degree. This is the type of definition often used by admissions officers. The TRIO program, a series of federally funded programs, outreach programs for disadvantaged students, uh, defined first generation students as all students whose parents have not ob obtained a post-secondary degree which presumably would narrow the definition to exclude those parents uh, who earned a two-year degree. First, the first scholars program of the Souter Foundation offers a similar definition as they offer scholarships to and accept into their program students whose parents have no more than two years of education beyond high school and no post-secondary degree. Finally, some researchers have narrowed the definition of first generation students to only those whose parents have a high school or less degree of education. The first problem presented by the absence of a universal definition for first generation students is that it makes the comparison of different research findings difficult, if not impossible. Another problem is that one must clearly specify the definition being employed in order to calculate accurate numbers of students who fit in the category in various venues. A broad definition, such as students whose parents do not have bachelor degrees, will suggest greater numbers than a nar narrow one, such as students whose parents have no more than a high school degree. In recent decades, the number of first generation students in the US has been estimated to be between 22 and 77%, but the figure depends on which definition is used. A third problem has implications for how institutions serve the students. The difference between the broad and narrow definitions is the powerful is 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 the potential for meaningful differences in cultural capital between the categories. Students from families with no college experience whatsoever are expected to have less, perhaps much less, cultural capital than those whose parents had some college experience, even if their parents did not graduate. Yet another problem that Davis observed when reviewing research by Engel and Tinto was that researchers failed to clearly designate first-generation students from low-income students. 
Instead, they reported data which represented low income or first generation students only. This means that the findings cannot be accurately assigned to either low income students or first generation only students as independent groups. What are the characteristics of first generation students? It's important to understand that generation, first generation students are not monolithic. As a category, they share certain common characteristics, but subgroups of first generation students also have cross cutting memberships with other categories such as low income, academically unprepared, underprepared, minority status, and others. The cross cutting memberships do not define first generation students as a whole. College professionals providing services to first generation students should guard against the tendency to use established assistance protocols intended for other subgroups, such as low income or traditionally at risk students, when helping first generation students who do not fit those categories. As Davis explains, it is not that advisors have not heard first generation student complaints before, or that the more experienced among them do not recognize them as a syndrome, it is that they do not have an established assistance protocol at their disposal. The problem is that first generation students are not always low income individuals, nor are they always traditionally at risk. A clear understanding of the characteristics unique to first generation students can inform the development of effective protocol. Perhaps the most important distinction of first generation students is a characteristic that they lack cultural capital. Within the context of the first generation students in higher education, cultural capital refers to the knowledge students and their families have about the variables involved in getting into college and persisting in college once there. Cultural capital has been called the key construct in the experience of first generation students. A major impediment to success for first generation students and the one main characteristic that separates them from students in other demographic categories. Students whose parents have college experience pass on to them information about the culture of college and what it means to be a college student. This helps the students to become intuitively oriented toward college. The lack of college related cultural capital has a large impact on first generation students. As David Davis asserts, it affects every dimension of being a contemporary college student. Some researchers have examined uh, data from longitudinal studies and compared first generation students to non first generation students using eight different definitions of first generation. The Education Longitudinal Study of 2002 is a series of surveys of a nationally representative sample of students conducted over a 10 year period from 2002 to 2012. The researchers found no matter which definition of first generation was used, Students in the first generation category were significantly less likely than students in the non first generation category to plan on taking the SAT or ACT, to apply to college, and to enroll in college. Engel and Tinto reported that 60% of first generation students do not graduate. More recently, the scholars' first program of the Sutter Foundation reported that the average national graduation rate for first generation students is only 34% compared to 55% uh, for the general student population. An older study published in 2001 by the US Department of Education National Center for Education Statistics identified some characteristics of students whose parents did not go to college. Having parents who did not attend college was correlated with the 
They had a lower likelihood of enrolling in post-secondary education. They reported lower educational expectations than their peers. They received less assistance from their parents in applying to colleges. They were less likely than other students to have taken the SAT or ACT test. They were less likely to enroll in four-year institutions. They were less likely to remain on a persistent track to a bachelor's degree. Finally, the researchers' analysis of data concluded parents' education remains a significant gaining access remain significant for gaining access to post-secondary education and for persistence to a bachelor's degree attainment at a four at four-year institutions even after controlling for other factors such as income education ex expectations academic preparation parent involvement and peer influence what are some challenges that first generation students face while the largest challenge for first-generation students is closing the gap in their college-related cultural capital, numerous others have been identified and discussed in the literature. Ward describe, and others describe academic adequacy issues, academic adjustment issues, social adjustment issues, realignment of expectations and realities, independence issues, affirmation issues, and understanding campus culture. Additional challenges identified by Davis included the imposter phenomenon, developing a college student identity, and concerns over blending in, and family mythologies about college and transitions in family relationships producing separation anxiety, breakaway guilt, or survivor guilt. Advocates for and interventions for supporting first generation students are suggested by the literature. Both private foundations and institutions of higher education serve as advocates for first generation college students. One such advocate is the uh, and program is the First Scholars Program, which is an initiative of the Sutter Foundation dedicated to increasing graduation rates in, of first generation students. The First Scholars Program seeks to implement evidence-based interventions and operates on selected campuses at four-year colleges and major public universities. The program provides scholarships and guidance for students throughout their entire four years of college. According to the website, each year focuses on an annual theme and targeted learning objectives that progressively evolve from year to year. Freshman year, connecting to campus. Sophomore year, optimizing the college experience. Junior year, expanding career and community opportunities. Senior year, transitioning to the future. There are also recommendations that we can take from the literature for institutions. Several researchers have offered recommendations for institutions as to how the institution may assist first generation students. Selected examples are presented here. Provide, they can provide guides for first generation students. The culture of college is not something one can learn from a lecture or be instructed by an expert. Instead, it must be learned over time in conjunction with experience. Davis says that first generation students need guides and that progressive institutions interested in improving the success of first generation students will supply guides. He says that administrators should construct an educational environment in which the first generation charges can catch up, in which they can approximate being oriented to college intuitively. Davis listed 12 issues for college leaders to consider in their efforts to serve first generation students. One, provide remedial courses. Two, provide instruction in skills, study skills for first generation students. Three, help first generation students participate in study groups. Four, offer specialized academic advising. Five, help first generation students overcome the imposter syndrome. In other words, 
to feel like they belong in college. Six, provide a University 101 type course for first generation students. Seven, offer a program that models the procedures and protocols of academic discussion and debate for first generation students. Eight, offer a pre-registration orientation to the institution. Nine, throughout all four years of college, help first generation students resist external pressures to leave college. 10. Provide avenues and encourage first-generation students to become involved in campus life. 11. Create unstructured, informal public spaces for first-generation students to exist on campus, especially if they are commuters. 12. Help first-generation students develop personal relationships with faculty and staff.